the state of crypto in the EU, a special report on regulation, CBDCs, and crypto taxes. In this special report, we take a look at the European Union, looking a little bit further at which nations are most crypto friendly, how EU regulations affect cryptocurrencies, and more. The relationship status between the EU and cryptocurrencies is complicated. Even though Europe's share of global crypto transaction volume in 2021 was the highest of any region, the ECB has repeatedly advocated for a digital euro and reprimanded crypto for being wasteful and an enabler of illicit activities. In this special report, CoinMarketCap looks at the crypto friendliest countries in Europe, the latest EU regulations of cryptocurrencies, the ECB's stance on a digital euro, and how the ECB's monetary policy impacts crypto prices. Which European nations are the most crypto friendly? First, assuming you are likely invested in cryptocurrencies or a true blue crypto native, you would probably think that countries like Dubai or Singapore with their favorable crypto tax regime would rank at the top. And surprisingly, a recent report ranked Germany tied with the US as the most crypto friendly country in the world. In terms of crypto taxes, European countries are not as anti-crypto as their officials make it sound. Let's take a look at some of the top European nations with crypto friendly tax regimes. Germany took the spot as the most crypto friendly nation, beating out Singapore in a report by crypto exchange aggregator CoinCub. Partially attributing to its rise is the fact that Germans do not have to pay any taxes on crypto profits under 600 euros. If you hold crypto for over a year, you are not liable to taxes either, regardless of whether the cryptocurrency was earned through trading or staking. Crypto mining is a taxable event, but you can make deductions for equipment and resources. Portugal famously has no tax on crypto at all, and that's made the country somewhat of a crypto tax haven for individuals and led to the rise of a sizable crypto scene. However, Portugal announced that it would eventually tax crypto as well, although the implementation of this idea is probably still some time away. Slovenia is one of several countries, Hungary being another one, that attempts to grab a share of the crypto market by offering an easy flat rate tax. Gains are taxed at a flat 10% with a generous 15,000 euro tax threshold. Mining is seen as personal income and is taxed accordingly. Other notable mentions are Switzerland, Hungary, and Malta, all of which either have low capital gains taxes or dedicated low tax legislation specifically for crypto. Cryptocurrency regulation in the EU. The EU passed two key pieces of regulation in 2022. Number one, transfer of funds regulation or TOFR. And number two, markets in crypto assets or MICA. Both were passed to facilitate the competitiveness and innovation of the financial sector in the European Union to establish Europe as a global standard setter and to provide consumer protection for digital finance and modern payments. So let's take a look at each in more detail. Transfer of funds regulation or TOFR. TOFR imposes compliance standards on crypto assets to crack down on money laundering risks in the sector. It passes several intricate measures. All crypto asset transfers will have to be linked to a real identity regardless of value. Service providers involving crypto assets, i.e. exchanges, will have to collect information about the issuer and the beneficiary of the transfers they execute. All companies providing crypto-related services in the EU member state will become obliged entities under the existing AML directive. Non-custodial wallets will be required to collect and store information about their customers' transfers. Enhanced compliance measures apply when dealing with non-EU entities. TOFR was the directive that caused outrage and mockery among crypto proponents for requiring non-custodial wallets to collect and store customer information. This, of course, is virtually impossible to enforce and sort of defeats the purpose of a non-custodial wallet. Markets in Crypto Assets, or MICA. MICA is the big one and the key legislative proposal regulating the crypto sector in Europe. It was passed by the European Parliament by all 27 member states and implements the following measures. The European Securities and Market Authority, ESMA, the European equivalent of the SEC, and the European Bank Authority can prohibit or restrict the sale or marketing of crypto assets by virtual asset service providers, i.e. exchanges. The ESMA will develop a methodology and sustainability indicators to measure the impact of crypto assets on the climate. The ESMA will supervise exchanges regulated in non-EU countries. Exchanges will be subject to AML regulation and will have liability for damages or losses caused to their customers due to hacks or operational failures that they should have avoided. Exchanges will have to segregate clients' assets and isolate them. Exchanges will have to warn investors about the risk of volatility and losses. Stablecoins will have to maintain reserves to cover all claims and the reserves will have to be fully protected. Due to a passage proposing the ban of proof of work as a consensus mechanism in the EU, MICA generated a lot of publicity in the summer of 2022. The past 
message was eventually removed, although the directive still emphasizes the environmental impact of cryptocurrencies. Bureaucrats applauded the directive, with MOP Dr. Stefan Berger calling it balanced and open to technology. He maintained the directive would set a global standard. Industry representatives were less enthused by the new regulation, calling it burdensome but not existentially threatening. The biggest challenge will be the harmonization of rules across all EU jurisdictions, a process that is expected to take two and a half years at least. The ECB stance on a digital euro and CBDCs. If there's one thing that you need to know about the ECB and cryptocurrencies, then it's the following. They praise central bank digital currencies and scorn regular cryptocurrencies. Look no further than senior ECB officials talking about a potential digital euro. Fabio Panetta, a member of the European Central Bank Executive Board, says a digital euro will come by 2026. A Bank of Finland governor says it could facilitate pan-European services. The ECB has launched an investigation phase of a digital euro. To put some real umph behind its arguments, the ECB has also published not one, not two, not three, but four different research papers and reports that argue in favor of CBDCs and against cryptocurrencies. A deep dive into crypto financial risks, stablecoins, DeFi, and climate transition risks concludes that stablecoins could have contagion effects on the real economy through their exposure to government and private debt. This would depend on the liquidity of the underlying collateral, but it's at least not completely wrong. DeFi needs regulation, probably true, but painting with a broad brush here. Stablecoins are impractical as a means of payment, which has already been proven false. Towards the holy grail of the cross-border payments looks at different solutions for cross-border payments. Bitcoin is unsurprisingly considered to be too wasteful and dismissed for having no KYC. Fintech solutions and correspondent banking, which are currently the most popular options, are solid but deemed inefficient. Stablecoins are dismissed for eating away at monetary sovereignty. CBDCs, unsurprisingly, are lauded as the best and most efficient option despite some privacy concerns that still need to be addressed. The economics of central bank digital currencies argues that CBDCs are good for retaining monetary policy, control, and prevent the exit to a foreign currency, as is the case with stablecoins. CBDCs also give policymakers a more direct and a more immediate transmission mechanism for policies such as reducing friction in fiscal payments. CBDCs allow for more effective implementation of monetary policy through interest rate hikes. While the paper paints this in a positive light, it's questionable whether concentrating so much power at the central bank is something desirable. CBDCs are commended for being an effective remuneration tool. Others would call it financial control. Overall, the paper recommends investigating a CBDC further to not give up control of the payments market to private, non-European companies. Finally, mining the environment. Is climate risk priced into crypto assets? Looks at the carbon footprint and energy impacts of cryptocurrencies and urges investors to pay attention to ECG standards. Cryptocurrencies are not dismissed out of hand, and proof-of-stake coins are likened to electric vehicles, with proof-of-work coins being the dirty combustion engine. The report calls upon public authorities to evaluate whether the outsized carbon footprint of certain crypto assets undermines the achievement of their green transition commitments, a thinly veiled threat to not let miners set up shop. All in all, the picture is clear. CBDCs are great and should come sooner rather than later in the form of a digital euro. Proof of stake is kind of okay, especially if there's KYC attached. Proof of work is a big no-no and should be shunned at any cost. The ECB monetary policy in crypto prices. So we've talked about the importance of monetary policy on crypto prices repeatedly. However, that was subject to US monetary policy. But do ECB policy decisions have a significant impact on crypto prices? The answer, not really. Despite the significant transaction volume in the EU, ECB rate hikes do not have the same impact, some would say do not cause the same terror, on cryptocurrencies as the ones by the Federal Reserve. For instance, the ECB's first rate hike this summer led to a bounce in the euro, but crypto prices didn't budge. Similarly, another 75 basis points hike in August of 2022 did not meaningfully impact the markets. Interestingly, the same is true for decisions by the Bank of England. Charlie Morris, founder and chief investment officer of ByteTree Asset Management, said that while all macro decisions matter, the Fed is the most important as it drives the global policy. However, considering monetary policies among advanced economies are rarely diametrically opposite to each other, Japan being a notable exception, it's probably not surprising that the Federal Reserve is seen as the one that's setting the tone for the rest. The EU is often portrayed as bloated with bureaucracy and averse to innovation, and not undeservedly so. The European crypto industry is fighting an uphill battle against its only bureaucrats in competing jurisdictions like the UK and Australia, which both aim for much more crypto-friendly regulation. That being said, crypto tax regimes in Europe are surprisingly vanilla in many countries, so it literally pays to hold onto your coins. 